who wants to see an entire cave bear skeleton and learn a little bit about that extinct animal. Well, if you don't, you're in the wrong video. Here's the one I got to see, the head anyway. We'll look at more of it. But first of all, this is what they might have looked like when they were alive. They could grow to about 10 feet long and about 1,000 pounds in weight, so not an animal you wanted to mess with. And in case you needed visual proof that this animal is not to be tangled with, here's one skull definitely larger than the one I got to see. And you can imagine that these monsters made quite an impression on people. First, though, here's the skeleton in its entirety. It's about seven feet tall. And while we continue looking at that, let's go back to the cave bear's relationship to man. Uh, the two species shared the planet for thousands of generations, our generations. Here, of course, is some prehistoric cave art depicting one. And no, in all likelihood, we did not hunt them and they did not hunt us. Which was a good thing for us, because here's its paw and one swipe from that and you're dead. Or as good as. Uh, for a long time, it was thought that cave bears were mostly vegetarian, if not like almost entirely vegetarian. And that's been challenged by some findings that suggest they were more omnivorous. I mean, I certainly have no idea, but that would make sense to me. Now, notice in this artist's depiction that cave bear skulls are being kind of saved, being put in an altar or even sepulcher-like structure. Well, the reason somebody drew this is because this has been found. So things like that, or a stacking of skulls up against a wall in a cave, has led a lot of experts to postulate that humans worshipped cave bears. Or it might be better to say incorporated them into their religious beliefs. The animal name Cave Bear, surprisingly, made it into the title of a hit film. If you're as old as me or older, then you might remember Daryl Hannah and The Clan of the Cave Bear. Back to our specimen, here's not what you want to be in the last sight you ever see as you get devoured. Again, pretty clear though that we were not a common snack for this animal. They probably looked at us as uh, fellow predators. They probably also looked at us as pests and dangerous ones because people essentially displaced cave bears from their caves. At least that's what scientists think and that put them in a more vulnerable position, right? More vulnerable to the elements less able to hibernate in safe locations. We definitely had a negative impact on this species, even though we seem to have been fascinated by them. As mentioned previously, and check out this altar-like stone with a cave bear skull very purposefully placed on top of it. Here's a different view of the head and mouth. A uh, lot of interesting little tidbits. One is that ancient lion skeletons have been found scattered in cave bear dens. But no, that does not mean that the bears went and hunted the lions and then dragged them back to their caves. That's highly unlikely. Uh, the leading hypothesis, pretty interesting, is that the lions might have gone into the caves trying to catch the bears hibernating. And when the bears were not in fact hibernating, then obviously a fight was on and the bear was likely to win. And that makes sense uh, from much more recent history when people used to make animals fight against each other, which was horrible, but they did it. And uh, bears would do very well against lions, tigers, and the like. Here's a size comparison, and there is no comparison between the size of the two. Uh, people definitely had to use their brains to stay off of the menu. Its shoulder blades were uh, just massive, as you can see. And this is not a very rare thing, this skeleton, by the way, because this animal was so successful uh, and for a long time that there's many, many examples that have survived. Uh, hundreds of thousands of skeletons were found in Europe. And here's something you might not expect. You know what happened to a lot of those skeletons? They were boiled down during World War I for phosphates. But luckily, there were just so many remains, like we said, uh, that there are plenty left over to survive and be studied today. I hope you found that interesting. One last look at my favorite part. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.